Well, good morning, HIU family, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Joey Ross. I am the new director of Campus Ministries. I know spring break was extended an extra week, and now we're dropping an online chapel on you in the middle of your time off. The reason is, is I have a bit of information I want to share with you this morning in regards to student life here at HIU and what student affairs will look like moving forward. But before I do that, I want to share a little bit about myself and then a reason for hope this morning. As many of you know, I stepped into this role and was just getting to know many of you when this whole COVID-19 thing changed our lives. So while I look forward to sharing more of my whole story with you at a later date, right now I want to take just kind of a brief moment and share one of my biggest passions in my life, my family. I'm married to my better half, Allison. We met in college. She's an incredibly encouraging, thoughtful, compassionate woman. Been married almost 11 years now, and together we've strived to honor God, and that includes being fruitful and multiplying, which has led to the three best gifts God has given us, our sons. We have three boys, Elias, who's almost six, Asher, who's four, and Levi, who's a wild toddler at two years old. I'll never forget the first moment when I became a father. May 2nd, 2014, my oldest son Elias was born. Now, like many first-time parents, we were preparing for him. He, we had his room decorated, walls were painted, cribs put together, car seats installed. We had taken child CPR classes. We had read some parenting books. I'm giving you a hint as to Allison and my personality types here. We like to be prepared. However, like all good things, there's a shadow side to it. In our preparation, there, there also can be an element of control. If I have it all together, then it'll go as planned. So the day came when Elias was born, and everything was going fine. We woke up at 4 in the morning, rushed to the hospital. Labor was going smoothly. We had music playing. We were staying in Hotel Hogue down in Newport Beach, Ocean View Room. And then came the time for delivery. Exhausted, sweaty, lightheaded, I managed to stand by my wife Allison's bed. And I don't do great with medical stuff, so this was no small feat for me. But we made it. And at 1.14 p.m., our first little boy was born. One problem. There was no noise, no crying, no movement, not even an umbilical cord wrapped around his neck to show what the problem was. And immediately, they rushed him to the other side of the room. They pushed the code blue button, tried to get his blood going and lungs working. And then finally, after 45 seconds, he began breathing, and we were able to move forward. Those 45 seconds have been etched in my memory as one of the longest moments in my life. Panic set in for me, and I looked to Allison. She was strangely calm in this moment. She was like, it'll be okay. He's fine. At first, that was helpful. Normally, the roles would be reversed, but then I realized she's just kind of high from the epidural. She doesn't know what she's talking about, and so I went into panic all over again. I was so worked up by those first 45 seconds, I ended up feeling sick for the rest of the day. I actually slept 13 hours that night. First night with a child, my poor wife delivered the baby. She was knocked out sleeping on a hospital sofa. Here's the thing. In all of our preparation, all of our planning, all of our dreams for our lives and for his, I desire to protect him and guide him and love him within the first moments of life, I realized I am not in control of his life or even mine. There's no guarantees he would breathe, no guarantee that he would live his first minutes or first few days or how many years. The control I thought I had built up in my preparation was wiped away. Many of us are having to face that harsh reality right now, that you are not in control of your life. The things you had planned and worked so hard for are not going as planned. The athletes whose seasons have been cut short, including our men's basketball team who made it to the tournament. Our SGA team has poured hours into events that are now canceled. All those participating in the school musical that won't be performed. Or seniors who've worked so hard and now will have to wait for commencement. And much more. We want you to know first and foremost that we in no way want to minimize your pain or sorrow that many of you are feeling right now. And whatever you're feeling, we believe in a God who can hold space for you. We are saddened with you. We are here for you. We care about you. And we're going to provide support for you. I'll tell you how in just a few minutes. But I also want to affirm to all of you the simple truth that while we are not in control of our lives, there is a good shepherd, a loving God who is in control. Not only is he in control, but he sees you and cares about you and is with you. He sees 
We see this truth throughout the whole narrative of Scripture. In Genesis, when a man named Joseph, life is going well, it says God is with him. And his, when his life is a wreck and injustice strikes and his plans don't go as, as he wanted, it says God is with him in a prison cell. When the Israelites finally make it into the promised land, Moses, parting words to his people are this. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. When Jesus, the long-awaited Savior, comes to earth, the angel tells Joseph the name of the child will be what? Emmanuel, which means God with you. And when Jesus departs from earth after the resurrection, his parting words, final words said on earth are this, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As HIU has repeatedly said, we serve a big God, a God who sees us, a God who is with us, even in our homes. And I want to encourage you to fix your eyes on the God who is with you. I don't want to minimize the pain or sorrow, like we've said, loneliness or whatever it is you might be feeling, but I want us to begin to think and be encouraged that God who is with us has an invitation for each one of us at this time. In a sense, when we live the with God life, there's no problems, only opportunities. Opportunities to become the people God says we already are by entering into a radical trust relationship with Him. I love the line from the famous Cory Ten Boom who helped hide Jewish people during World War II. She said, if you look at the world, you'll be in distress. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, the God who is with us, you will be at rest. So while we may not be in control of our lives or our circumstances, we are in control of how we choose to respond. And as a student affairs team, we want to help you enter into God's rest in this season. So to become a, a non-anxious presence in a world that is hurting and in need of Christ. The mission of HIU is to empower students to serve the church and impact the world for Christ. I believe the greatest way to serve the church and impact the world is to become more like Christ. Because after all, what God really gets from your life is not what you accomplish, but who you become. This all brings me to what life will look like moving forward here at Hope for the remainder of the spring semester. As you're well aware, the world is rapidly changing right now and our university has had to respond and make changes. You should have gotten an email from our student affairs team describing much of this, but I wanted to cover some of it with you. As we've been planning, praying, and preparing for weeks ahead as the student affairs team, our heart has been, how do we respond and not just react to this disruption caused by COVID-19? And how can we help make order out of chaos? In short, how can we help turn this disruption into a time of devotion? I know many of you are using your time wisely. I've seen your Instagram challenges, heard about Netflix having to lower streaming quality in order to continue letting you binge watch your favorite shows. We want to encourage you to not just do those things, but to find Jesus in the midst of all of this. So with that said, here's the plan. We're holding it very open-handed for the coming weeks ahead. First off, is that all undergrad students will be enrolled via Canvas into an online course called Student Life, which will include stuff for campus ministries and wellness. Don't worry, this isn't a class, but it's a hub in order to be used to, to dump a bunch of resources for you. I'll cover some of those now, but want to encourage you next week to check out everything that's in there. Secondly, Chapel will now be online via YouTube. We'll be releasing every Thursday at 10 a.m., as well as later posting to your Canvas course. Chapel will be roughly about 15 minutes, devotional style messages, and also be a source of uh, uh, encouragement to you, as well as information about ongoing things happening here at Hope. Due to social distancing and wanting to abide, abide by best practices, worship will not be part of the video content. However, I encourage you, check out the playlist that we've put together for you in the email that was sent out or engage in your favorite worship music. You may even want to do this prior to chapel release on Thursday mornings. As you should be well aware of, HIU does have a chapel policy requiring you to attend 12 chapels and 12 small group gatherings per semester. At this time, we will be substituting the chapel requirement. This should be good news for many of you out there. All we ask is that you subscribe to our HIU YouTube channel so that you can be informed when chapel videos land, and also that you would submit one roughly 300 word reflection paper by May 7th. 
This is a small ask of you and that'll be available via Canva. There'll be more information out at a later date. In addition to chapel, we are well aware that many of you work, go to school, play sports, and much more. During our time of force slowing down, we wanna help create healthy weekly rhythms for you. So every week we'll be putting out a practice via Canva for you to read and interact with. In addition, on Wednesday, we're calling them Wellness Wednesdays, we'll be releasing short videos through HIU Student Life Instagram, where we will unpack topics like anxiety, fear, gratitude, emotional health, and more from a pastoral as well as wellness perspective in order to encourage and equip you. If any of you are feeling anxious even right now as I talk about some of these things, maybe you feel a bit overwhelmed, we are here for you. We're available to pray with you and talk with you. Just because we're social distancing does not mean we need to socially isolate. The best way to reach us is to email wellness at hiu.edu. That'll automatically send you a schedule so you'll be able to meet with myself, Abby, Stacy, Stephen via phone or video chat. We also have the Hope Counseling Center available to you as well. In addition to those announcements, there's a few other things going on. We'll be looking at, at having an interactive immerse sometime in April. We are still also accepting student leadership applications and we'll have a Zoom meeting for information night available for you. And there's so much more, I, I don't have time to cover all of that right here. But we just want to encourage you to check your emails and stay informed in all that's happening. As we wrap this up, again, know that we are here for you. We are praying for you and we want to encourage you to press into God's invitation to you in this season. For those of you that are struggling with the losses, this is not the end. In the words of the famous Christian Julian of Norwich, remember this, all shall be well and all shall be well and all matter of things shall be made well. Why? because God is with us. God bless.